people still walk into marriage expecting the beach, the vacation, expecting the sunny beach days, the, sun, the ocean, talking about the sunset, the palm tree. Don't get twisted, people. You gotta be safe. It's dangerous around those palm trees. See, hurricanes start to come in, the storms start coming in, start washing things away, start washing away your peace, the happiness, your joy. Next thing you know, you're stuck in the house. You're stuck in, you're stuck in your hotel room with your husband or your wife, and you start to get to know them better than you ever thought you would. Those storms start coming in your relationship. Those storms start coming, and what those storms start to do, they don't just tear things up. What they do is start to reveal things to you. Reveal the true identity of who your marriage is. It starts to peel back the fancy of what you thought marriage was going to be. That's what the storms do. They start to challenge you. Start to ask you a hard question. Are you really able, capable of standing the test of time? Standing up to the storm? Getting through the struggle, the tough times to maintain this long marriage. I mean, you was listening to and playing Keep Sweat, Make It Last Forever when you was dancing. You were staring in each other's eyes on the dance floor, and it was like my endless love. You know, it was like endless love, like there was no end to this. It was just a beautiful thing. But then the storms start coming, and you look outside, and the beach is all washed up. That ocean that looked so peaceful, it starts to get real choppy. Ain't no sunset, you just see dark clouds. Those beautiful palm trees, they're, they're swaying and bending to that hard wind. Then you realize, uh-oh, the honeymoon's over. Now here comes the storm. Here comes the challenges of what marriage it brings to you. And see, it's not the challenge of whether I love you, you love me. It's the outside. That's what people don't realize. It's the outside challenges that's going to be what tests you, what tests your home to find out. Can a divided house stand? Can a divided kingdom stand? You will find out when the storm hits. Because those outside storms, it's going to test you, it's going to challenge you. You can set your watch those storms. You can watch set your watch those storms, but you can set your watch those people who are looking at your house, looking at this beautiful house you built, because you built this house from the ground up. I'm talking about from the first day. He up there opened the door for you. He paid for the sparkling conversation. You built this foundation. You built this foundation because y'all created a friendship. You and your spouse created a beautiful friendship. Y'all created a bond. And y'all built this beautiful house together. Now y'all cemented this house. You're cemented this house when you put your rings on each other's fingers and said, I do. But then you didn't realize after you said that. You rolled off and you said, This sunset, you saw this beach, you saw the palm trees, and you saw everything was going to be great. And the rest of your life was going to be just like chilling on this beach until you see a storm start rolling in. And you didn't realize the storms came from people close to you, people that was lurking around, people who were sitting at your wedding, eating your food, drinking your wine. Dancing, but at the same time, while you staring in your spouse's eyes, staring and seeing the sparkle in your eyes, you didn't see a darkness in there. You didn't see a death stairs. You didn't see them contemplating, waiting for that crack to come into the foundation of your room, expecting you, praying on that foundation to get a crack so they can slide into it and divide that household. You didn't see it. You didn't expect it. You can see a lot of us go into marriages and we have this expectation that because you know you live together or you stay together that this marriage is only going to be a continuance of our previous relationship. It's just going to be a continuance. You know, I was with you four or five years. I married my best friend. You no, know? this is just when the marriage is only cemented. It's just legal. It's just paperwork. But what you don't realize is it's starting, it turns into more of a statement. Not just to each other, but to outside people. Outside people will see this marriage as a moment where you achieve something. You achieve a level of success. You achieve a happiness. You achieve the purpose of finding someone that you can spend the rest of your life with. So now that you know that you're not going to spend the rest of your life with, you have somebody that you love. 
that's going to love you. Somebody that's going to sit there with you when the lights, when the storm coming and the lights go out. When it's, you get snowed in, when the pandemic hit, you have someone who you can shackle up with, you can fuck you down with. Someone you can sit there at home while watching movies. You never have to go to the movie theater alone. You never have to go to dinner. No more bad dates. Well, you may have a few bad dates. I mean, I've been married 12 years, you know, I ain't gonna lie, we have a few bad dates. <laughs> you gotta try to figure out what to talk about it. Sometimes you don't know what to talk about. You know, you go on a date that you already got planned, and you got an attitude, like I had an attitude, or she got an attitude. You know, you go on bad dates, it happens, okay? So let me stop you that. You might have a few bad dates. But that ain't the point. The point is that you find someone that you want to spend the rest of your life with, but you have to watch out because there is people who still haven't found them. Who's looking for those cracks in the foundation to find out if your house, a divided house, can stand the test of time? Can a divided house stand if the question is that asked? So we don't find out. Let's find out, people. See, because when you're dealing with these storms, the storm realizes storms come in different ways, in different house, you know, you got hurricanes, you got tornadoes, you got snowstorms, you got windstorms, you got hailstorms. There's all kinds of different storms that come. See, one storm may be the pandemic. COVID-19 hit. Everybody's forced to lock down. Now we have to stay in the house. You can't go to the grocery store. You can't go to work because you got work from home. You can't visit friends. You got to eat Thanksgiving alone. Now you're locked in the house with that man or that woman that you said, I do with it. I wouldn't spend the rest of my life with you. And in the midst of you saying I spend the rest of my life with you, you're like, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. I said I spend the rest of my life with him. I didn't say I was going to sit in the house 24 hours with him or her. I didn't say that. Now, hold on, hold on, God. Like, like, hold up, God. We got to talk. I didn't say I was going to spend 24 hours in the house with him. I said I was going to rest of my life with him. I didn't mean the whole entire day and night with him. So you telling me, because now we both got work from home, I got to sit here with you 24 hours a day. Now, look, man, listen. Anybody married, you know, this is a test. This is your first test right here. This is one of the storms because you're forced to now spend this time and time with someone. You don't have an outlet. You can't go out together. You can't go out to go brunch with your girls or go drinks with your boys or go shoot food with your boys. You're stuck in here. And if you're married long enough, been in a relationship long enough, you know there's disagreements that come. You start to get frustrated. Anybody's married and tell you that, oh, I like my spouse 100% of the time is lying to you. You're not. I don't care who you are, you're married to your best friend, you're not going to like your spouse 100% of the time. I don't like my wife 100% of the time, she don't like me. I love her 100% of the time, she loves me 100% of the time. I don't like her, she'll always like me. Because we do things that get on each other's nerves. We all did. That's the reality. We all did. But when you're stuck in the house, those little things that you do to irritate someone becomes a big thing. It becomes big things that start to test you. It becomes a storm, a huge windstorm that comes and tests the foundation of your home. It starts to test you to see if you're going to divide or stay together. Because now you're stuck in this house and these little things just still keep nitpicking, keep coming up with little issues that you didn't notice before you start to notice. You start to notice, I don't like every time you're eating, he always picking his teeth or he licking his fingers. I don't like it. it. It didn't bother you before because you know you got outlets and stuff. You used to laugh at, laugh at with your girl, but you can't hang out with your girl. So now it becomes an issue. Stop looking at your damn fingers. So I tell you, stop looking at your fingers. What's disgusting? And it turns to an argument. Or he gets mad. He get mad because you're snoring. Or because of the way you're cooking. You don't put enough season in your food. And he used to, you know, be able to drown down because he used to laugh out by with his boys or something. But now he's starting to get irritated because he's stuck in the house with you because of the pandemic. And now he get irritated by the fact that you keep cooking chicken. Like, why are you always cooking chicken? You don't know no other bird. Let's eat some duck or turkey. Hell, I will eat a pigeon right now. I don't want no more chicken. And the fact that he cooked, she cooked chicken one too many times becomes a huge argument in your house. And she looking all confused like, oh, I thought you liked chicken. I thought you loved chicken. It becomes an argument. And now you got to weather this storm. This storm starts to ask yourself, can this marriage, can this marriage that now seems to be being divided by this storm that was created, can this house that was built, this so beautiful house that we built, this friendship that we have, 
can't survive. And as now we feel the fire of dealing with the pandemic has caused us to start to at each other's next. Now we turn from not liking each other to start to question, do I love this person? Do I want to spend the rest of my life with someone who always, with this guy always licking his finger? Or do I want to spend the rest of my life with this woman that only not cook chicken? Is she going to turkey? Is there any other kind of bird I can eat? Cook a bird. Like, you start to ask your question. And the storm starts to come in and it starts to divide the house. You have to ask yourself, are you able to be strong enough when you question is your relationship able to manage and maintain these type of storms? We'll get to it. We'll answer, we'll answer that question at the end. Because there's other types of storms. See, it's the pandemic is over, the lockdown is over. We're back out, we're free. We're all free, right? We're all free to roam and do things that we normally do, but be safe though, right? Be safe though, because the COVID still lingering around. Be safe though. But safely, we're still able to go out and figure out, hang out with our friends and stuff. You know, you're able to talk about your husband looking his fingers while your wife sitting there always cooking chicken. But then other storms start to come up because now that you're able to get out, you have to deal with those outside storms. Those outside storms, and those outside storms are where I get sometimes your friends, it can be family. People who start to lean on your relationship start to really put their weight and their pressure on your relationship to test it. They're testing your relationship see if they can stand up towards the storm. Because see, some people are just not happy with seeing you being happy. Some people don't care about your happiness, your peace. Some people are only interested in what they can get from you. They don't worry about it. Say the wedding, yeah, they're drinking wine and all that, but like I said, they let that stare on it. Look at you there. I get three weeks, I get them a year. I get them two years. And when that two years pass and y'all still ain't broken up, they're like, you know, I got to intervene with this because, see, it's been two years now, and uh-uh, she should have left him by now because we need to start going these girl trips again, and we can't really hang out like we used to because she's stuck with this dude, and she's too happy, you know, making cupcakes and all this other stuff she's doing. So then let the outside sources of your girl sit here slip, whispering sweet nothings into your ear. She sit here telling you, like, yo, you know, I see your husband. He is at lunch. And he was there all hugged up with some girl. And that's not the case. See, she she exaggerated the situation. Exaggerated situation. Okay, I'll, I'll, set the, I'll set the tone for you. I'll set the picture for you, people. Of an exaggerated situation, okay? Your husband's out on a business lunch, right? He sees an old friend. Hey, give her a hug. You know, it's nice to meet you. You know, talking to her and everything. Oh, but your friends see it. Now, she's only going to say that she was hugged up and exaggerate the situation. She's not going to say that he just took... Two minutes out of a business luncheon to say hi to a passing old friend had a two-minute conversation. Oh no, he was out to lunch with this woman and was all hung up. Exaggerate the situation. If you're not careful, if you're not trustworthy, if you don't have the type of relationship where you sitting there need more proof, need more evaluation, not understanding the type of friends you have and their true intentions, that storm can be a hailstorm that starts to bang down huge pellets. Baseball size pellets in your house, boom, boom, busting holes all in your roof. And when it's done busting holes all in your roof, next thing you know, the rain starts to come. Because see, the, the pellets, the huge pellets came from her telling you that. The rain starts to come when your husband comes home and you already pissed. You sitting in the dark, women, because y'all know y'all do is sitting in the dark with a glass of wine with the lights off. You come to the house and you know, why are you so dark in here? Like, hey, 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 where you at? It's pitch black in there. Then you just turn on the little light, the little lamp. Looking all creepy like a lifetime movie. Talking about the rules up there hugged up. What what chick was you all hugged up with at, at lunch? What are you talking about? What do you mean? Don't play dumb with me. You know how y'all get some time, ladies. Don't play dumb with me. Sherry already told me she's seen you all hugged up with some trick. Now tell me who it was. Then confusion comes because an argument starts to ensue because she's like, yo, what the hell are you listening, Sherry? Wasn't hugged up and I was just saying hi to such a, I don't like that chick anyway. Why are you there hugging her? And it turns to a storm. And long story short, it starts to rain and the house starts getting divided because you start, your husband started looking like, man, I don't want Sherry to hell around me no more. And you talk about, well, Sherry's my best friend and it causes a division because see, Sherry doesn't want to see you and your husband living your best life. Sherry was sitting there threatening. And even though she was your patron of honor, she was chilling the table with the depths there one. She was smiling when he was looking. 
But when you was like Ash for looking into each other's eyes endlessly in love, she was already thinking to brew up this storm that was going to cause a division in your household. But can your household stand against that division? Now ask yourself, people. Sometimes you got to watch your boys, man. You got to watch your boys. Because I had a situation in my marriage, okay? Not even in my marriage, in my relationship before I got married. We got to be careful because sometimes your boys step in and see, they see you happy. They see you in love and they try to make fun of it. They try to tease you about the fact that you found happiness, that you found the woman that you love, that you want to spend the best of your life with. Like this woman is everything to you. I'm talking about she's your best friend. You know, she's your best friend. You can laugh, you can joke with her. You can watch movies with her. You can sit here and dance. You can just be you and her and have a good time and don't need no one else. And you found that type of happiness with your boy. See, he ain't found that type of happiness yet, man. He's still chilling at the bar every, every weekend, you know. Ladies night still trying to get a date. Can't get a date at the bar. You know, he wants you to hang out because he's like, yo, I can't get a date at the bar because I ain't got no wingman. You supposed to be boys, you know, you supposed to be my wingman. You supposed to be here, you know. I'm trying to holler at the girl. She there with a friend on ladies night, and I ain't got nobody to help me out. You supposed to be there. So he starts to coach you. And say to you and put some little sweet, whisper sweet nothings in here, such as like, oh man, you know, you can just come and be my wingman. You ain't really gotta like take the girl home or sleep with you. You can just sit here and flutter a little bit. It, who's gonna hurt? She ain't gonna know. You know, it, it's not gonna bother anything. That's not what happened in my situation. I'm just saying this is what happened. Okay, I'll get to my situation in a second. But this is what he said to you, right? This is what he said to you, people. I mean, brother, fellas, this is what he said to you. So he's telling you, you're like, you know what, you're right, man. You know, we just don't know. Yeah. I can be a waiting man for you right now. You did just to hang out all the time. And I did leave you off the side. And you were fell right for the trap. That was a hailstorm again. That was a hailstorm. Pop, bam, 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 hitting that roof, poking those holes in. Now here comes the rain. Here comes the rain, man. Here comes the rain, my fellas. Rain comes when you sit there, you actually sit at the bar, get them drinks up, and you flirting. You flirting, and you know, you thinking it's harmless flirting. You know, start getting out of control, or maybe it's not. And your wife calls, and then you come at home all drunk up, and she's like, what's going on? You smelling like perfume because you're getting a little too handsy and letting the woman, she start to lean on you and lay on you and all that. Now you got to go home and explain to your wife, like, why are you smelling like perfume? It meant you didn't do nothing, but you did do something because you was fighting. Now here you go, seeing a situation where the house is starting to divide again, and she's looking at you crazy. And the trust is starting to get broken because you let your boy talk you into a situation where now you was being his wingman, but he ain't your wingman because he ain't sitting there thinking about the fact that now this, this woman was leaning all over you, got her perfume all over you. He didn't say anything about the fact that now you got to go home and explain this situation to your wife. He didn't think about the fact that he may be breaking up a happy home. You got to be careful, man. You got to be careful. Stop letting people break in your house. Stop letting them divide I'm them, don't be in storms. Y'all watch them. So that happens. That happens and causes a division. Now, can your house stand? Can your house that's now divided still stand? I said I was going to tell you about my situation. Okay, so I'll quickly briefly tell you about my, my situation. Quick, real quick. So, me and my wife, um, we was we just dating. We was living together, we were just dating. And it was a, a number of things that happened when we were going on. Just real quick, just share this quick story. And my wife had her sister staying with us, and we were already in like a cramped one bedroom apartment. And it was just starting to get frustrated because I felt the, the way of her sister being there, you know, I didn't have space coming up the pandemic. You feel all cluttered in, and you feel congested. And then you know, I have a boy, you tell me, like, oh man, you know, you know, this situation ain't working out for you, though. You need to just let this go, man. This is not going nowhere. It was what's supposed to sweet up into my ear, and it, it was feeding everything I wanted to hear and need to hear at the time, I thought. But he wasn't thinking about, yo, I'm in a relationship with my best friend. I'm in a relationship with a woman that makes me happy. I make her happy. We, we have something here. We have a bond. We have a connection. We have something. We're building something here. He's seen the framework in my house. And he's seen it crack. The slightest crack in that foundation. So, okay, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Break that thing apart. And he succeeded for a brief moment. Because after he fed me the information, I ended up separating from my wife for about a month. And we eventually reconciled, and now we're married. 
going on 12 years. Let me tell you something, people. After 12 years of marriage, you know, I'm going to tell you what I know about marriage. Absolutely not a goddamn thing. I'm smart enough to know that I know nothing about marriage, but you've got to prepare for those storms. You've got to watch those storms to the cause your house to the body. Okay? That's all I know. But that's a true story that happened. And like I said, me and my wife reconciled from the situation. What I realized is that what I learned about life in just the relationship to marriage is that you have to be careful about outside people. Because it was family members that was included that I left out that played a part. There was friends that played a part. And what happened was at the end of the day, we left us split up. And what I realized when we left us split up, nobody can sit here and mend your broken heart. Nobody can fix that broken heart. When I was feeling the pain and missing my wife, nobody could help me. Those nights I went to bed alone, nobody was there to comfort me. So I had to realize something. Careful, I should outside the church too. Watch it. But sometimes, see, the storms don't always come from outside sources. Don't always come out from your girl. It don't always come from your boy. It don't come from those things. Sometimes the storm comes from inside your home. You probably say, how can you go inside my home? You know, like, how can you go rain unless I got like a boom roof at the time? Well, I got like the cowboy stadium, I got open the roof. Yeah, sometimes you do. Sometimes the devil lives inside your own house because you invited him to the house. Sometimes the issue of the relationship lies in your own house. The storm that you're trying to hide from is already brought to your house because you didn't look out and you didn't pay attention to some of the issues and some of the signs before you got married. I'll give you exhibit A. Let me tell you what I watch out for, people. If a woman's sitting there more concerned and more focused on how much you spent on a ring and how many carriages that down the ring is, you gotta look at that as hold on a second. Are you more concerned with, and women, help me out with this, because I know you're probably having to scream it, I don't care. But this is from a man's perspective, I'm going to tell you what I feel. If that's what your concern is, then it starts to make me wonder, what are you more concerned with? How many carrots and how many numbers was on that carrot on that ring? Or how many carrots are we trying to extend this relationship? How important is that ring? Because see, if you worry about the size of the ring, what you're really worried about is how you're showing that bling off to your friend. That's what you worry about. You worry about the bank account. If that's the issue, if you worry about my bank account, then you got to ask yourself, when the storm comes, people, because the storms come, and the money gets low, because we all run into those moments, how's this relationship going to stand up against that? How? How's the relationship going to stand against that, fellas? How's it going to stand when she's more worried about your bank account, when your bank account dry up, when the recession kick, kick in, when inflation kick in, and your, your job can't give you those bonuses like you used to, when you ain't getting those raises like you used to, and you can't buy her new red bottoms, or you can't buy her new Michael Kors bags, coach, those things are fine, Gucci. What happened? Can the house stand? Is that, can we y'all stand in that store? Well, it just ain't on the ladies. What about the fellas, right? What about the fellas? So you get married, you get to these relationships with these women, you say, oh, they got the long hair, you know, they got the big breasts and big butts. But what if she, you know, decided to cut her hair? She come home one day, and you know, you go, hey, honey, I'm home, and you look home. What the hell's happening to you? What happened to your head? And now she got a TWA, or she got a bald head, or she cut her hair short, talking about she's trying to look like Holly Perry. And you like, man, I married you because you got long hair. But what happens when she cuts her hair and you can't handle it? Can the house stand for that? Can you stand for that? What happens when you come home and she has those big breasts, those big voluptuous breasts, and that's what you married her for because you're like, damn, like, her breasts are so big, excuse me, her butt is so big, that's what I married her for. And one day she comes and say, look, I'm getting a breast reduction because my back is hurting. Can you stand up to the fact that now you got to deal with a woman with small breasts? Or can you stand up to the storm? Can you handle the storm that's going to come? Can you handle it? Fellas, can you handle it when your woman starts to change? When her body starts to change, can you stay up that storm? What are you truly what's interested in? Because see, we talk about the woman being truly interested in a while. Are you just truly interested in her outside appearance, but not think about that true beauty lies with them? Do you understand it? Are you prepared for that? Can you handle those storms? Because like I said, sometimes the storms come from inside. You are not saging your house and stuff. Talking about trying to get all these evil spirits out, and only you understand that you're trying to eliminate yourself. Can the house divided stand? No. A house divided cannot stand. 
It cannot stand, people. No house the body can stand. No castle that the body cannot stand. If you cast out the devil, you might cast out yourself. So what can you do if you got a house of the body stand? You got to learn to. You have to learn to repair those cracks in your foundation. You designed and built this beautiful house from the first day on up to put the roof on when you went and said the I do's. But you got to remember, you have to maintain, do the maintenance on the house. You might be stuck in the house with pandemic and you don't like the fact that your husband keeps licking his fingers or keep liking the fact that she cooked chicken. So here's what you do. But ladies, you don't like him licking his fingers, go buy some wet wax. Some wet wax, what is wet wax? Some wet wipes. They're like, yo, when he starts to feel, hey, 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 you know, hey, wipe your fingers off, man. Chill with the licking the finger stuff, man. We need to slobber your fingers. Well, she keep cooking chicken. Why don't you go get a steak in the hair? Hey, no, put that chicken down. No, put that chicken back in the fridge, man. Cook the steak. Guy. I'm not doing chicken, bro. Little things like that can fix those little small issues. It seems like small, simple things, but you have to prepare. Repair those divisions before they get too big. You got to buy those cracks before you allow people to come and exploit those cracks. When you see a boy talking about me, wait, man, you got to tell him, like, look, I'm happy. I'm happy here. I find somebody else. Craig and them, man, go talk to Craig. Them. I know Craig kid. Really, he stuttered real bad, but you know, you want to use Craig. Because I'm good. I'm not coming home smelling like perfume. When your girl trying to tell you stuff, man, you got to tell her, yo, listen, either come with the straight facts, come with identical proof of video. Or don't come at all, man. Don't come bringing me nonsense to my house. you got to make those steps, people. I want to thank y'all for listening to another episode of Pair for Present Podcast. Before I go, just remember to repair your cracks, keep your house strong, and do not uh, and understand that the body house cannot stand. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning in. Um, check out wherever you check this episode out, download this episode. Remember to check out other episodes that we recorded, we have out. And remember, people, a house is the body to not stand, but make sure that you continue repairing the house, that you keep the house safe. It took a lot of time to build it, maintain it, keep it. And until next time, I'll talk to you people. I only got a few things left to you, left to say to you. Excuse me. Stay woke, stay focused. Most important, stay tuned. Peace.